I am so done with my evening routine <laughs> and I want to change it because it's fucking up my sleep schedule and also the quality of my sleep and also the amount of books that I read and I just want to improve on all of that so maybe I should do a reading one hour before bed challenge starting today oh <laughs> Hi, I didn't see you there because of today's sponsor, which is Manta Sleep. Manta Sleep makes the world best sleeping masks. Everything that they do is fueled by their belief to enable better lives through better sleep and regular naps. So they sent over this <laughs> sleeping mask my way, which is a 100% blackout sleeping mask, which is absolutely perfect because in my new room at my parents' house, it becomes super light, quite early in the day. And I can tell you after trying out this mask for a couple of weeks that no light will get through this sleep mask. Plus it's really comfortable because it has these funny pads that you can like remove and adjust to your eye shape and like the distance between them. And I promise you that your sleep will never be better after you get this sleep mask. And if you use my code Sabine, you can get your Manta sleep mask with a 10% discount. Now let's go on to my reading challenge. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so it's the first night of doing my reading one hour before bed experience challenge thing. I am gonna finish reading this book right now. In my dreams, I hold a knife by Ashley Winstead. Let me finish the book, then I'll tell you all about it. This thriller has been revealing so many secrets from all these really intense, interesting, extremely morally gray characters. And there's gonna be some more juice at the end and I, I need to find out. <laughs> Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I'm, t I'm too tired. I will talk to you about this book tomorrow. <laughs> so, <laughs> it has been a couple of days um, since I promised you the update on In My Dreams to Hold a Knife. I actually started reading another book, so I have to give you some updates. <laughs> my opinion on this book. I have absolutely adored this whole reading experience and I kept on thinking about this book long after I finished it. I don't know if I gave you guys the synopsis for this book or like the premise, but this is about six friends who go to a college reunion and there is one unsolved murder that happened 10 years ago in this friend group. And at this reunion, everyone kind of like suspects the other person and you're gonna figure out all these secrets that these characters in this friend group have been hiding for so, so long. And you slowly solve this unsolved murder case. <laughs> this definitely falls into like that dark academia category of books. And I think it's absolutely wonderful. This book has so many extremely morally great characters, which I love in books because people in general are definitely morally gray. We are not good or bad. We all have the stages in between in our lives somehow. And this book really explores that theme. The two books like that I'm gonna talk about right now, they both have the theme of daddy issues <laughs> in it as well because these characters have some problems. They are quite unlikable. I do have to say that. And I usually wouldn't think that I would like to read about unlikable characters, but especially our main character, damn. She is very narcissistic. Is that how you say that? She only thinks about herself, her reputation, how she wants people to look at her. And she only really does things or says things that are gonna work out good for her. And she doesn't really care about other people's opinions, thoughts, feelings, etc., which I usually wouldn't like in a book. But this time it absolutely fascinated me because I think Ashley Winstead really gave the characters a lot of depth. So you could kind of see where the reactions, where their responses came from. Not to say that it was good, but I felt like the characters and their motives were working out really really well and I adored the mystery and the slow revealings of secrets and this book had a couple of shock factors um especially at the end there was this one thing that was being described I'm not gonna spoil it for you but I was shocked and it gave me chills <laughs> an absolute must read if you're into murder mysteries with a dark academia vibe I need more books like this um leave your recommendations in the comments down below I kind of changed the game to this reading one hour before bed challenge because I know noticed that if I actually started reading one hour before my usual bedtime, I would become super tired and I would not be able to read for 60 minutes straight. So instead of reading exactly one hour before my bedtime, I decided to read at least one hour the evening um, 
before going to bed. Does that make any sense? <laughs> so I wouldn't necessarily start reading at like 10.30 in the evening, but I just start reading at seven or eight and then kind of just like spread my reading time until I go to bed. So yesterday I read one and a half hours in The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Started reading this book two, three days ago and look how far I am. <laughs> Currently I'm on page 206 out of the 300 and 50-ish pages. The first 60 pages of this book, I was like, wait, <laughs> I'm not enjoying this. And I absolutely adore the Inheritance games in which you follow Avery, our main character. Her mom has passed away, her dad is not in the picture, and only her half-sister is taking care of her. But they are not financially stable at all. They're having quite some struggles. Until Avery randomly inherits all of the fortune of one of the most rich billionaires in the world. <laughs> she doesn't know the man and the rest of his family doesn't really get to inherit anything, but she has to live at Hawthorne House for at least a year and then like the inheritance is secure and safe and everything. So you're trying to solve this mystery of why did she inherit all this money even though she doesn't know this man and this book, this series mostly focuses on Avery's interaction with the rich man's grandsons. There's a lot of <laughs> tension. I mean this book really features a lot of horny teenagers and again daddy issues. Lots of daddy issues. Book one, absolutely adore, but then I won't spoil anything for book one and the start of book two, but the beginning of this one, I was just like, where is the plot going? Am I interested in this kind of like new mystery that is being introduced to us? In book one, the plot moved super quickly. But at the start of this book, I was like, oh my gosh, slow down. It was just plot and not a lot of like character depth. And I still feel like that's lacking a little bit in the second book. And I am finding our main character a little more <laughs> annoying <laughs> than in book one, because I feel like she doesn't really care for the people who are the closest to her, like not the rich man's grandsons that you should focus on. It should be your best friend and your half sister. And she's realizing that she has been a shitty person to them, but I feel like she doesn't make any effort to change that, which bothers me. And I'm not like a huge fan of the love triangle that has been going on in this one because it's her between these two brothers and it it's making me feel a little uncomfortable. But it's so easy to read and it reads so quickly, not just because of the writing style, but because the chapters are on average, maybe like four pages long, which just keeps me wanting to pick it up and read more. So that's what I'm gonna do right now, even though it's literally like 11 o'clock in the morning. But this challenge has also made me read more in general, which I think is great actually. So that's also what I'm gonna document because it's an experiment and these are the results. I will be working tomorrow at the bookstore and I will be picking up book three because I feel like these books are perfect for this challenge because I'm just flying through them, even though this is not the best. It's just fun. And is it so bad to read something fun right now that isn't the most perfect and worked out book? No, it's not. And then I became sick. <laughs> Last night at around 12 until 4 a.m. I just could not sleep. My throat hurt so much. I had muscle aches headaches. So I was like, I, I got COVID, but my self test is negative. So I haven't been able to read anything in the Hawthorne legacy. Right before I went to bed yesterday, I read three pages. <laughs> like I don't feel great. So I don't think I'll read a lot today or for a really long time. So until so far, this project isn't going so, so well. Uh, but that's just kind of because I feel like life is getting in the way. <laughs> Okay, I am absolutely done for today and I've read almost 30 minutes, which is not bad for me not wanting to read at all. So I feel like a sack of potatoes, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Ended on chapter 72, page 282. And now I'm gonna try and sleep off this weird sickness thingy. Hopefully I'll feel better tomorrow. <sighs> okay, I've been feeling 
I've been feeling way better <laughs> in comparison to yesterday. I think I wrote this on Goodreads, but this book reads like a musical, the dialogue and just like how the characters respond or act to one another. It's like so dramatic and over the top sometimes. And the family relationships that are being discovered and explained are just um, unbelievable, kind of. And it feels a bit Game of Thrones-ish. Um, there's technically like not a lot of incest, I think, but it's just getting so complicated. It's becoming kind of ridiculous. And right now I feel like the little reveals are all a bit um, over the top. <laughs> Am I gonna vlog in public? Apparently, yes, I am. I thought let's do a little bit of a, a change in scenery to end this reading challenge. Overall verdict, I can say that I failed. <laughs> At least I failed in staying consistent in filming my reading updates and like actually trying to hit that one hour mark each day for around the past week. But the side effect of this challenge has been that I have been reading more throughout the day instead of just reading more at night before going to bed. And I have learned to not look on my phone as much before I go to bed, which has improved my sleeping a lot. I also finished reading The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, and this book was ridiculous. <laughs> Whereas the reveals and the clues and figuring out the mystery in book one felt so clever in book two, it just felt a little cheap and I totally agree with Cindy's review on Goodreads so she worded it so perfectly I cannot agree more. Despite all of that I still bought book three when I went to the bookstore and I don't know why I did that because I could have just like left it off at book two and just be pretty much like done with this series because I'm not really interested anymore in what's gonna happen with these characters. It's just that the love triangle feels like the main focus of the story right now and it makes me feel a little awkward. I don't like the direction in which it went at the end of book two, but still I was like, what is Jennifer Lynn Barnes gonna do with the story in book three? And also if I don't continue right now, I probably will. <laughs> never really pick it up anymore because I will have forgotten all of the ridiculous plot lines and family ties and stuff like that. So on Friday we had Leonie's Halloween party and it was so much fun. It was also part of her graduating with her master's degree which is just absolutely amazing. Leonie, I'm so proud of you of your achievements. I loved seeing everyone's Halloween outfits. We were also there with our like Dutch booktube gang. We drank some drinks, we had some fun and and on my way to Leonie and on my way back, I had like in total an 80 hour train ride. So I had some time to read this book and I read around 30 pages. So I am on chapter eight right now, page 28. And I wanted to read more after Friday, but a little personal update, like yesterday was an absolute shit show. And that is because, <sighs> that is because my boyfriend is on a foreign exchange in Seoul, Korea. And if you guys have been a little up to date with the news, you know that in Itaewon, literally the street where he lives, over 150 people died. And um, he let me know yesterday that he was okay, but that he experienced it all and saw it all. And that was uh, very intense, <laughs> as you might be able to imagine. So that has really affected me these past 24 hours. It's taking a toll on me, as you may, might be able to tell, like I'm, I'm, I'm tired, but I cannot imagine what he has been going through. He has been on the Dutch news, like all over the Dutch news, sharing his experience. So that was kind of like, I guess, f funny to see, but it's, uh, yeah. The emotions are everywhere. That was beside the point. I just wanted to give you a little personal update on why this challenge has also kind of failed. I hope that you all did enjoy this chaotic video. <laughs> Don't forget to check Men to Sleep and the link in my bio and use my code Sabine to get the discount for their sleeping masks. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. <laughs>